Okay, so Happy New Year. Uh, tonight's uh, video clip, whatever you want to call it, is going to be the second, uh, third, of whatever you want to count it, um, on uh, Macau Shiro Nagura. These uh, out here tonight, uh, the focus of this particular session is a tenju. Um, this one is uh, Betsy Jew. This is Tokyo. Uh, this is an uneven shape. Pretty much all white. This one is also an uneven shape and very striped. Uh, this quality grade, these quality grades, uh, there were two others. Uh, if this was perfectly square, or either of them, and um, this one was all white, so it would be Betsu Daiju. And if this was perfectly square, it would be Tokyo Ju. Now, these quality stamps, you have to remember, it doesn't mean that this is a great tenju. Right. The quality here is relating to the shape and the color. Now, people always ask me what the colors mean. Shape is what it is. It's either square or it's not. Um, as far as color goes, that it's an incredibly long story. It has to do with the history of the quarry, the mine, and so on. It goes back, like, you know, to Edo, maybe before. Um, and it really doesn't help you hone a razor. I mean, you know, knowing what that's all about. And so I'm not going to get into it here. To be quite frank, I don't have the whole story. Now, parts of it, as it's been explained to me, I don't know if it's really written down anywhere, like, you know, in a history book. Some people have written it down, but what that is, some kind of dust. Anyway, um... But a lot of this uh, in Japan is uh, it's a cultural thing, and it's not so much, uh, you know, OCD, you know, argue on the internet about who's right kind of thing. Um, the mood and temperament and, and tempo of using these stones in Japan is much different than it is like, you know, what you read uh, in Facebook groups and other forms of social media. All right, so, um, all right, I'm getting off track. All right, so, uh, Tenju also comes in bench stones. This is one, you know, uh, this has a different stamp. I don't know if you can really see that so well. All right, right here. Okay, that's the quality stamp. That's the Tenju stamp. Uh, this is a sword grade. Now, that actually does mean a little bit more um, than the quality stamps over here do because uh, these were uh, cut for sword polishes, to togishi, and um, it's almost ridiculous for someone owning razors to own one, but I think it's a beautiful stone and um, it's a beautiful old, you know, antique, you know, piece from way long ago, um, probably the Magi period possibly Edo, you know, and um, I like to hone on them. The sword polishes will curve the surface, you know, and they work with the curve on the heavily convexed edge of a katana or a wakazashi or a tanto. Um, but I use them flat the way we normally do when we're honing razors. Anyway, I just have this out to show, right? Um, just so, you know, people can see it. I mean, the back is beautiful. I mean, look at that. You know, it's like like a tree or something. You know, like bark. Uh, just gorgeous piece of rock. Anyway. So. In the first clip, um, I talked about using uh, bote, which is uh, the most coarse. Tanju, now, is um, the middle. Majiro, which is the next stone in, in the progression that uh, I work with, um, is also middle, and Koma would be finest. 
Some people say you only need either Tenju or Majiro. And that can be true. But this is one of those things where it's not a recipe. So I can't say with absolute certainty that any one particular way is right or wrong. It really depends on who you are and what you're doing. And more importantly, well, look at your stones. That These actual Nagur, you know, they're all different. This is Tenju, but it's not mixed up like in a lab. All right, so this piece of Tenju is going to be different than either of these other two. This relates to a layer of stone that's in the ground and it's like all bent and compressed and comes from different parts of the quarry over a very long period of time. You know, these stones were referenced in a book in the 1700s, so they've been coming out of the ground since at least then. What I'm trying to say is that a Tenju is a Tenju, but not all Tenju are the same. So if you have a Tenju that's a little coarse and a Majira that's a little fine, they're both the middle of the progression, but one can precede the other. Sometimes you find a Majira that is more coarse than a Tenju, and that's when it gets confusing. So you have to know what you're working with. All right. The only way to know what you're working with is by using it and testing it. And that's what I try to do. I buy them. I put them in boxes. I go through them. I pit one against the other. I test. I look. Sometimes I use a scope. Usually I can just tell by feeling them at this point, you know, under the blade. I, I can't tell by doing this. That that doesn't do anything, you know. Uh, this one actually is my favorite, Tenju. I've had it a long time. It's always out. It's always on my bench. It's a go-to. It's striped. And the slurry from this is like this wonderful creamy pasty thing that you can't really put into words. This texture, but it's very smooth too. Uh, this one, all right, you see it has a number. That's my number. That's I have a book with everything numbered, every single Nagura I own. And trust me, there are a lot. Um, there's a line listing. It's like a spreadsheet. And, uh, and when I use them, I, I make notes. This one's a little more granular. You know, this one is a little harder, and it's kind of in the middle of these two, uh, so far as feel goes, but it's surprisingly fast, which is, you know, a nice thing when that's what you're looking for. And when I say fast versus slow, I'm not talking about like leaps and bounds. It's all subtle stuff. All right. It's... Uh, like any other thing where there are nuances present, you get dialed into it, you start noticing stuff. No, that, that's not a Nagara, that's one of my new Nakayama horns that just came in. Um, that's gonna need its own video, I think. Um, this is an incredible piece of stone. All world. Things cut like a brick. It's as hard as it gets. Honing on it is like just wow, okay? Not the most incredible looker, you know, but it's cut reasonably well. It's very flat. But um, anyway, this video is about these guys, not that big ass home. So, now lately, a bunch of guys have uh, been emailing me, asking me about the grower and stuff, and messaging me. and you know, there's a lot of information out there. Some of it's on my site. Sometimes people take stuff from my site and then they go running around the internet regurgitating what they think they read. They take stuff out of context. That happens all the time. Um, you know, and it's fine. You know, it's whatever. It's, it's honing. No one's going to die from misinformation or like convoluted information. The thing is, is like, to know these stones, you gotta use them. And you gotta use them like a lot. And you have to use a lot of them. You know, anybody that comes on the scene like in January and by March, they're like some sort of honing guru. <laughs> I wish you could feel what this is like under the blade, it's sick. Um, <laughs> um, this is like way too much slurry. Um, but I just wanted to show it off because it's like a little creamy yellow. And um, it 
you really can't hear too well with uh, the mic on my iPhone over here. It's not all that great. Uh, this is my trusty greens wedge and I know it really well and it's got like a real stiff heavy grind so it really transmits feedback well and um, up until like you know 15 seconds ago it had a finished edge on it but now it doesn't <laughs> but that's fine because I hone all the time and I'll just run this through the rest of its steps to get it back to shaving um, that's no big deal I grab this one a lot because well it's close to my hand usually and does pretty well. I mean, it's a feedback thing. Full hollows to me don't really transmit much. They're kind of dead on the stone. Wedges, anything you're holding with tape, they can be good and they can just suck. It really depends on the blade. Uh, but anytime you're putting tape in there, you're muting like half of what you can feel. Now people say, well, why you listen to the feedback from the spine when what you want is from the edge? And it's like, well, it's all the same feedback. Now, yes, there's a difference, okay? But as the slurry is doing its thing, what's coming off of the spine, you know, feedback-wise, it can't not be important. Plus, I might kind of talk to the edge anyway on these grits, so most of that's a moot point. Now, you know, I know the video, like I'm honing here and you're asking like, so what's it like with Tenju? Well, it's like the same as honing with all the other Negro. Um, I will do a video of, you know, the progression. That'll be a long one. And I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to stop in the middle and do microscope photos to show you the bevel because... Well, you know, a lot of that is just bullshit. And I don't want what I do to be lumped in with all that other crap that's out there. I'd rather just talk about what's going on. Maybe field some questions later in the comment section or people email me. That seems to be the best way to go about it. Um, you see how quiet it is? It's partially the stone, but this particular slurry is very quiet. It's very creamy. Yeah, I can't relate it to like some kind of dairy product like a lot of people do, but it really is. That's an amazing lager. Right? Um, so what I would do is when I'm holding a razor, right, I would start up, I'd set the bevel or whatever, and then I'd go to both hands and work the slurry until it's petered out. And, <clears throat> if I had determined that I actually was done with Botan, I would move on to Tenju. If I wasn't done on Botan, I'd do another session. And I tell a lot of people, you know, just you know, it's not Botan, Tenju, Majero, Coma. Sometimes it's Botan, 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 Tenju, Majero, 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 Coma, Coma. <laughs> you got to learn, you know, um, comes by doing. Um, can be slow, can be very slow. If you're into speed, these are not the stones for you. Um, people ask me a lot. They say, what if uh, I'm using synthetics and I want to use a girl? Like, what's my jump point? Like, how do I figure it out? Well, you know, and I hate to keep saying it, but there's no absolute science. And um, one thing you want to keep in mind is because it's not an absolute science, you need an open mind. So what I'm trying to say. Well, you know what? I'll just tell you what I tell people starting out. Hold to 5K, preferably 8K. And go to ball 10. And progress. Eventually, you will find that you do not need the 8K anymore. That you can move from 5K. Me, most of the time, I'll go from a 1K to a 3K. And then over to ball 10. And occasionally 1K straight to both. I can tell you that last scenario almost guarantees that I'm going to do two sessions on both. Which is fine. I spend a lot of time when I hunt. I, you know, on any one blade. People ask me all the time, hey, you want to own a razor for me? And it's like, well, you know, I'd love to do that. But I don't have an extra couple of hours to donate to a razor I'm not going to share with. 
You know, I'm not being a dick. It's just, you know, time is precious. And when I hone, I hone for Zen and I hone for peace of mind. And I take my time and I'll stop, you know, and I'll go look on the scope or I'll go do something else. Or maybe I'll relap the stone I'm working on. I'm not just blowing through it. And to me, and this is just for me, to hone with being concerned at all about time just ruins the whole thing. My whole life is a schedule. I get up at work at a certain time. I'm out the door by a certain time. I'm in the diner by a certain time. I'm at work by a certain time. And and once work starts, like right now especially, it's like batshit crazy over there because we have a lot of shows coming up and I'm working at warp speed. Like you want to talk about multitasking. I got more plates spinning in the air than a freaking clown in Ringling Brothers. <clears throat> so when I come home, I see my girl shut down a little bit, take care of some business. You know, talking with her, being together, and then she's got stuff, I got stuff to do, you know, and we take care of that too, and then, you know, I'll take out a stone, I'll be like, I'm going to home, you know, uh, I do it just about every night, and uh, I'll home things that don't need to be home. I'll do like what I did here, I'll take a shaving edge and I'll drop it down, just from like, because, well, I can, and I want to, and I love it. But that's for me. You know, some guys are just like, you know, I want to shave and I want to be done. Most of the time, guys like that are probably not going to be best served with J-Nets. Maybe, I don't know, but I think synthetics are a better call there. Uh, you can see, this is a little thicker than I would normally get, but it's not really thick. Um... So anyway, the whole thing about like, you know, is it Bow 10, 10, Jimmy Jiro, or whatever. Well, for me, when I set up a set, yeah, that's the order, that's the progression, that's how it goes. I set the stones up, you know, of course, to find nice. I'll like wait a year to match a stone if I have to. Um, <clears throat> I have boxes and they're staged, you know, it's like these are figured out, these are figured out all the way, these are new, whatever. Um... So how long you got to go on any one particular one it depends on you, your stone, your base on, your slurry, your content, your slurry, how much pressure you're using. There's no one real way to say, you know, well, to say it accurately that, you know, 40 laps on both ends, 60 laps on 10, that, that doesn't work, okay? Um, you got to read the feedback, you got to watch like what's going on with your edge, you know? This stone's a little wedgy, so the, the undercut doesn't come up like it does on a full hollow. The grind of the blade pushes the water back down, but you can see that it's like riding up. It just doesn't always ride up the same way it does with like on a full hollow. And the thing about Tenju is um, it's like a real refinement state. It's the first one. Botan is pretty coarse. Um, here you're really moving towards finish with this stuff. And um, it's a lot of fun. You know, a um, little bit more knowledge about Tenju. It happens to be uh, quarried from two layers. And they're both called Tenju. Unlike Botan, that comes from two layers. But one is called Ye Botan. So with Tenju, there are two, you know, strata, seams, so you want to call it. And um, one of the two is actually prone to be riddled with sand. A lot of fun, right? Um, most of the time, these little pieces, you know, they've been cut, you know, around all of that. See, I got a little bit of split bombing over there. I got to be careful. <coughs> <clears throat> In fact, I'd like to take a look at that right now. I forget. Yeah, you can't really see it. Let me get it down here. But like right over here, there's these like well, it's an inclusion, but it's it's soft, um, and it's little dots, and it's formed by water seeping through this very porous stone. All right. So what happens is sometimes 
Well, there's a couple of things. And what's happening with this one is there's a whole bunch of those little spots in one area, and then there's a straight line leading from it, and that line was probably a split, and it's filled in with soft material. So what can very possibly happen here on that line is the stone could split. And that will piss me off because I really like the stone. And it'll split right through and it'll probably take out the stamps. But, you know, to me, for this, it doesn't matter. The natural stones, these things happen. You, you, you just live with it. Um, I think everyone should have two or three sets of them. Um, I think it was Saki might have wrote about it. It might have been like someone from Hanami. I forget who. But, um,. Wrote about having multiple Nagura around in case one goes bad while you're home. I gotta clean up the stuff, just say. So, you know, there's that. It costs money. Most people only want to like throw down on, you know, like one set, but you know, in a couple sets kind of keeps you out of trouble. Um, the other thing is, is if you have a couple of sets and like, let's say you're using one and you're not digging it, you're not feeling it, the feedback isn't telling you that you're really working the edge, then you take another one out. And see, so I got a white one, right? And you can see the slurry here. I'm picking up a little bit of the, the stone, but I can see probably better than you can if the slurry is predominantly white. It's a thing with some Nagori, even if like you have a hard ass stone like this, you wind up picking up particles from uh, the host stone. The only ones that don't really do that are those like ridiculously hard Azulkos. Um, and some of the showboys that are like, <laughs> they're probably waste stone that nobody wants. Um, wind up being sold in the sharing world, but <clears throat> so there's a uh, cheap piece of stone. You know the ones I'm talking about. Those are $80 razor horns that you see online. Um, when they are stupid hard, nothing takes any of it up. It's like marble. Now because the stone is so super hard and smooth, and I mean like it's ridiculous, <laughs> you're not going to hear anything. But I can feel it. Excuse me. It's a little bit more granular, you know, and um, it's probably, well, it's not probably, I know it is because I'm on it, but um, stone like this, tender like this is often, not always, right, gonna be a little bit slower than uh, like the one I just showed you. You know, and the feedback is granular, but it's not like, you know, concrete. It's just, you know, little itty bitty ball bearings are down there. You can feel them like starting to crunch up. I know, you know, there are people who want to like argue and say, well, it doesn't break down or whatever. Okay. There's an argument post going on right now somewhere, I'm sure, whether or not Jane that slowly breaks down. I have a new rule when it comes to like that kind of stuff or any type of argumentative nonsense. Uh, three posts and I'm out. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. People want to fight to the death for like likes or Facebook friends or some other happy or shit. That's fine. I got a whole lot to do. All right, so there, there's that one. Um, I'm just going to be a little sloppy here. Let's go right over it. Take this one out. And I can feel that it's pulling up more stone more quickly. It's a little harder. It's a lot harder, actually. It feels a little bit more abrasive. Um, more yellow in it because well it's got yellow in it whereas with the white one you picked up yellow from the snow 
when people ask, you know, how does it work if you got this tenju and it's like 5K and you put it on your Sato and no, Sato is, I don't know, whatever K. And it kicks up some of the slurry. Like, what do you do? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can run screaming into the forest and hide behind a tree and cry. Or you can just hone your freaking razor and stop whining. It is what it is, man. It's a freaking natural stone. You want some sort of absolute perfection, hone on film and finish with paste. This type of thing is not about that. I hate to sound like coarse, but it's like, stop trying to turn natural stones into like synthetic wonderment. There's no technical ecstasy here, except for what you do. The stone is the stone. It's perfect in its imperfection. Mother Nature created this. Some guy pulled it out of the ground, cut it into a rock, you know, that you can hone on. And you hone on it. What grid is it, you know? How do I finish it? Just hone. Start from coarse, go to fine. Chances are you'll get a shaving edge. Refine that process. A little more work here, maybe a little more work there, not so much in the middle, change it up, do very little here, a lot more there, some here. Take notes, pay attention, you'll get somewhere. You'll figure it out. Will it be the sharpest edge in the world? I don't know, man. You know, I do real, I do real well. I get real sharp edges, real sharp, real smooth. You know, they work for me. I have a miserable beard. I really do. I'm not just saying it. Most guys online, they're like, oh, I have a coarse beard. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> maybe everybody in the world has a coarse beard. Chances are they do. Mine grows in freaking crop circles. When I talk about grain, it's ridiculous. Okay, it goes like upward, sideways, over, under, down. Um, you know, it sounds like a yardbird song, right? And I got whiskers on either side of my upper lip and under my nose. Like feathers, you know, feather double-edged blades. Yeah, they hang up in that stuff, like a brand new one. You know, guys tell me, oh, no, I can't be. Well, fuck you, you can't be. It is. All right. A lot of it is my prep, which sucks, or it's non-existent, you know. Maybe if I sat around in a shower for three days and put like 40 hot towels on my face and rubbed it down with olive oil every 15 minutes and drank four gallons of water every day, maybe then I'd have like a better time shaving. But I don't live like that. And I really don't want to. Right? I have no prep. I wash my face. Maybe I put on an extra couple of pads of hot water. There's no hot towel. I love it. Sometimes, and I hate to say it, I use Barbasol. Great stuff. Um, it's actually my test uh, lather because uh, it's always the same. There's no variables. Push the button, foam comes out. Um, yes, I get better shaves when I use a better soap or, you know, a puff with a brush. Shouldn't say better. Barbasol is good. All right. Um, people call it canned goo and they talk badly about it. Well, I don't know. I shave great with it. Anyway. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't go through all these like hoops and, and dances to shave. I just go in and I shave. So my edge, right, it's got to be on point. If it's not on point, I'm going to be miserable. Now, on the odd occasion I have a problem with a razor, I put it down. I go get another one. Sometimes I touch it up when I'm sitting there, standing there. Yeah, I have a couple of homes in the bathroom because, well... I can do that, you know, but I'm more inclined to usually just grab another razor. I have a strop with paste in there, a little one. I use it for testing, comparing. Uh, when I get to about, I don't know, 18 to 25 shaves on a blade, um, to me it no longer feels like crisp. So I'll go for a little run on the paste. But anyway, I'm way off topic. Um, it all starts here on the stone, you know, for me it's with the Nagura. We call it a Nagura progression. I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say with that whole story is like, don't get caught up in the bullshit. You know, this stuff works, it works well. Um, 
But for it to work its best, you kind of got to let go of Western thinking. It's not really linear once you get to this phase of honing. It's not like following synthetics or it's 1K, 3K, 5K, 8K. It's not like that. Right? There is no K. Right? The honing is different. The action on the steel is different. The particles are different. They behave completely different. But you learn them. They'll treat you right. I mean, they treat me right. So you're like me. You do fine. All right, I'm just honing here for the sake of honing. This is not how I hone on the bird. All right, I would never really go that that long. Uh, no need. If I keep going, I'm going to pull up a foil edge on this thing, which isn't really necessary. <coughs> and it's usually kind of annoying. Anyway. Tenju, for me, is the second stone. And in the girl progression, it follows Bauten. It precedes Majiro. Can buy them in Little Rock. Sometimes they come up like 300 grams too. These are, yeah, this one's about 75, 80 grams. This one's about, will be about 120. Same for this. Um, size essentially doesn't matter. Um, for most people, larger pieces for me generally, they do seem to be more consistent, so I roll with them. Uh, the Nagura I use on a regular basis most of the time. I know, this is my favorite, and it's a little one. But the one in the drawer, that's like my go-to uh, in the set, is, um, I don't know, it's about 170 grams. I find the bigger ones are a little bit more consistent. Um, less waste, easier for me to hold on to. I have big ends. Anyway, that's the number two Nagura. Tenju.